Hi everyone and welcome back to the next part of our Salesperson's Guide to Video series. My name is Alexa. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to be covering the studio setup. setup that you don't use all the time, but it's definitely a great setup for your more professional videos. Um, a studio setup is also perfect for evergreen videos that you'll use again and again, and they'll just live on for a while. You don't need a ton of gear to get started with the studio setup, but you can still end up spending anywhere between $500 and $5,000, and that's just for the basic setup. And for the pro setup, you can, you can spend really as much money as you want. There's endless additions to your studio setup up when you get to the pro level. So like our normal salesperson's guide to videos, we are going to be covering both the basic and the pro setup. I'm going to be covering the basic, Matt's going to be covering the pro, and we hope by the end of this you'll feel like you can confidently go film some studio videos. Okay, so let's dive into the basic setup. So similar to some of our other setups, like the desktop setup, you are going to want a clean room, office space, or even a garage to film your studio videos. So one of the differences between doing your desktop videos though and studio videos is you will need more room for your studio videos. You don't just have a computer right in front of you, you have a camera on a tripod, and unless you have enough space, the camera will have to be too close to your face, which just won't work out well. It can be really flexible too, you don't necessarily need a huge backdrop, but you just need a clean space behind you and around you to film. So the next thing you need for your studio setup is a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So here we have a DSLR, it's a Canon camera, and this is one of the more expensive models, so I don't know if this is exactly what you would want for your basic setup. One of the cameras we suggest is a Canon Rebel T6. This is an older model, I think you can get these for around $400. Um, another tip I would suggest is getting a used camera. Um, typically you can find ones in great condition and it won't be nearly as expensive as a brand new camera, so you can kind of save money with your basic studio setup. As as I said before, this is a DSLR, and we don't have a mirrorless example for you, but the difference is just a mechanical difference between the cameras, and typically a mirrorless camera is a little more lightweight, so it might be better for you if you plan to take it with you a few different places. Typically, your DSLR will come with a lens um, when you purchase it, and we suggest just using that lens for your basic setup. Uh, we have one right here, so this should just come with your Canon camera, um, and it'll be all ready to go. So normally, the lens it comes with as well can zoom in a little bit, so you can frame things just right for your video. So the next thing you will need is a tripod. So the thing I love about tripods is you can get really inexpensive ones that work really great. Um, you can get lightweight ones that you can take with you wherever you go and it can double um, for putting your phones on and other things so you can use it for multiple setups not just the studio setup but we recommend in our salesperson's guide to video to get a $15 one for your basic setup that you can easily find on Amazon so when you're doing evergreen videos that are going to live on it's really important to have great sound because this is a video that people are going to listen to over and over again for a long time and you really want everything to be clear and understandable and so we have here a Rode on-camera mic, so it attaches at the top in the shoe mount and then you can easily just attach the camera to your tripod and you should be ready to go. So another great thing about these microphones is you can get a more expensive version or you can get a cheaper version. The Rode ones are more around $150 but you can also get other brands off Amazon that are only going to be around $50 so you can stick to your tighter budget if you have one. So in every video we have done about setups we have talked about good lighting and the same applies here when you have a studio setup you're going to want to have great lighting because these videos are going to live on. So when you film your videos, if you have natural lighting as an option, we highly recommend using that. Um, if you have 
window in your office or your studio, you can make sure you're kind of aimed in front of it so the lighting is facing you and lighting you up. If you happen to have a studio that doesn't have any windows or natural light, we suggest getting a bright lamp um, just to make sure you have the proper lighting for your evergreen videos. If you're really worried about lighting in your studio videos, no worries, Matt is going to cover a whole light setup for your studio in the pro setup. For the pro setup, we recommend having a dedicated studio room where you can keep all of your gear, your lighting set up so that you can just jump in there and shoot a video whenever you need to. The camera gear, we recommend using DSLRs, uh, camcorders or mirrorless cameras. Here at Bonvon, bon, we use DSLRs. We use these ADDs, uh, the Canon ADD. We recommend using a fluid head tripod for your camera. The fluid head tripods allow you to tilt and pan very smoothly versus the um, cheap standard kind of tripod heads. You can't tilt and pan quite as smoothly. You're gonna get some shakiness and some like jarring movements as you're starting and ending your pans. What we're using uh, to shoot this video right now is actually a Manfrotto uh, tripod and they, they make really good fluid heads. Um, we only have one of them and we're shooting with it right now so I don't wanna use it. But uh, you can find cheaper ones that still get the job done. For microphones, we recommend the Rodelink uh, wireless lab microphones. If you're using a DSLR, you just put the uh, receiver in the shoe mount on top and you tighten it in there. And you just plug it into the microphone jack. And then you can just put this one in your pocket and attach this under your shirt and it does a great job. The microphone, obviously, it's really close to your mouth, so it picks up really, really nice audio. But we also use, we at Bomba, we use this microphone a ton. Um, it's a little trickier. It's great for like, if you're just shooting a wide shot. If you're gonna go with a 50 millimeter lens or a zoom lens, it would be better to go with the lab microphone. Or if you're just documenting yourself or one person, you can just leave this on and have the camera running from wherever. It'll pick up nice, clear audio. At BombBomb, Bomb, we use these LED lights. And here, I'll show you. We got one here. It's the main light. We got one on the side here. It's kind of a fill light. There's Alexa. Hi. Uh, and then if you want to, if you want to do backlight, it's easy to just throw a uh, third light to kind of give a silhouette effect and that'll help separate you from the background a little bit more. The lighting setup really depends on your studio setup and the look you're trying to achieve. But usually just having a key light and then some fill light is enough to get a good image. So those are the two main setups basic and pro, and that's all the gear we think you need for both of those setups as well. So one thing to think about as you're setting up your studio space is how you're gonna incorporate your brand, whether it's through props or backdrops or colors. Like here we have a bomb bomb mug. We could totally just throw this right here. I don't know if that's the best, but with a little more thought, you can do a lot to kind of bring your brand into your studio. And one thing we do here at BombBomb Bomb is we have four offices at every corner of the building, and each one has a different paint color, uh, which aligns with one of the colors that represents our brand. It's also great for those videos that are going on social media or your website, because the background will then match other color elements from your brand that are on the website. So now we're gonna cover the best times to use a studio setup. And to start, we think it's great to use a studio setup when you're filming a video for your website. So if you have a video that's going to be on the front page of your website or anywhere within your website, that's a video that's gonna be watched a lot. It's a video that's gonna live on there for a while. So we highly recommend making sure that looks more professional by doing it in the studio. Another great use for a studio is if you're shooting a product launch video or a feature, you're introducing a new feature for a product, or even just an unboxing video where you're revealing a product for the first time. If you're doing a personal introduction or a video resume, we suggest using a studio setup. So for these, um, I mean, here at BombBomb, bon bon, we're all about video. So we think sending a video resume is a, just a great way to introduce yourself. People can get a good feel of who you are, and so we think it's great to have a professional video to introduce yourself. Another good studio use is if you're doing a more formal testimonial video or just telling a story that you're gonna to send to a client or a prospect. 
If you plan to film anything that's more scripted or more produced, a studio setup is probably your best option for that. Any video that has a longer shelf life, an evergreen video or something that has a larger audience that you're gonna, that's gonna live on YouTube indefinitely and have thousands of views, uh, putting in the extra production effort is probably worth it. And then, of course, educational videos that will live on social media. So this right here, what Matt and I are doing, is an educational video that will live on social media. Hopefully and it's educational. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's educational for you guys. Um, but we did use more of a studio setup for this whole series. We have the studio lighting, we have the DSLR, the nice tripod, um, the microphone, and we're just trying to keep this video looking really good and sounding really good so everybody can get the most value out of it on social. Your studio setup can definitely be more casual. Um, I don't know about you, but when I think sometimes about a studio setup, I think of a white backdrop, nothing around you, you just kind of standing there in front of a camera, but that's not always the case. It can definitely be like what we have going on here with a painted wall and a shelf. We have a desk in front of us and we're just in an office studio room. So you can definitely have a more casual vibe with your studio videos and that might fit your brand better. Another thing to think about in your studio setup is how you're going to present yourself. Are you going to be sitting or standing? And usually your posture communicates a certain level of energy, whereas if you're sitting, you're more relaxed. If you're standing, you might be a little more engaged. So you just gotta understand what fits best with the content that you're shooting. Another thing we recommend with studio videos is maybe adding in some B-roll. So if you have a video kind of like ours right now and it's going over five minutes, people might get bored just watching you sitting in a studio for that long of a period of time. So we recommend throwing in some B-roll that you've taken after doing one whole shoot of your initial studio video. Otherwise it can just start to feel more like a lecture, which is fine if that's what you're going for. For. But adding some B-roll can actually uh, kick up the production value a lot and really doesn't require a lot of extra work. I would just encourage you to be creative with your studio setup. Find your own voice, find your own style. Like The studio setup gives you the opportunity to explore uh, how you want your content to look and feel. Another important thing is to block off enough time for your studio videos. Typically because these are more produced, they might even be scripted, they will probably take you a little more time than a simple desktop or mobile video. And it's also important to be patient with yourself. You're not going to be perfect and your studio videos aren't going to be perfect the first shot most likely. So just block off enough time to really get the shots you want and say things how you want um, so you can just have great evergreen videos after. So the next setup we are going to cover is the on-the-go setup. With the on-the-go setup, obviously there's a lot of opportunities to use your, your mobile phone, but there's so much great gear out there. There's so many good mirrorless camera options and DSLRs that we're, we're excited to dive into all that. So we'll see you guys in a few weeks for the next part of our series. Bye.